Hey everyone, welcome back to the Freethink Progress Report. I'm back in the garage today with some more news about what's moving forward in the world. Today we're going to be talking about Legos, a new saliva test, and how your computer can help find a cure for COVID-19. You're probably familiar with Lego, the Danish building block company that takes most of my discretionary income. My son likes playing with Legos too. Anyway, LEGO has now converted a number of their molding machines to make more than 13,000 visors a day for the Danish health authorities. An employee in LEGO's engineering department came up with the idea after learning that there was a shortage of safety equipment for healthcare workers in Denmark. Beyond making face masks, LEGO is also giving free LEGO sets to children in need and helping to provide educational resources. Now, I feel slightly better about the fact that I spend a vast amount of money on small plastic bricks for children. A team of researchers at Rutgers University have developed a new FDA-approved saliva test for COVID-19. The new saliva test is much faster to administer and doesn't require the same level of PPE or protective gear for caregivers. It could allow for much quicker testing for more people, and right now that's crucial for containing the pandemic. We spoke with Dr. Andrew Brooks, a genomics professor at Rutgers, who was part of the team that developed this new test. I'm Andrew Brooks. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of RUCDR Infinite Biologics and Professor of Genetics at Rutgers University. And over the last uh, month and a half, we've turned our interests and workforce, um, our scientific staff, towards uh, creating better solutions for COVID testing. Last uh, Friday, we got uh, an FDA EUA for the use of uh, saliva for uh, self-collection or administered self-collection of saliva to uh, replace the use of nasopharyngeal or pharyngeal swabs that creates a collection environment that's easier for the patient. The swab-based test requires you to take a, a very long Q-tip, if you will, and stick it up your nose. People describe it as poking the front of your brain or uh, into your throat, deep down into your throat where the virus uh, likes to live. The saliva test is two mLs of saliva, so like a thimbleful of saliva that you just sit there and spit. So the concentration of the virus is more. It's exactly the same process for Ancestry.com, 23andMe. How quickly could something like this scale and allow us to test you know, the multitudes of people who really do need to be tested? Yeah, it can scale immediately. We designed this process without any truly proprietary technology that would require only our lab to do it or for licensing agreements to be made. This has been rolled out in the state of New Jersey and now in New York. Uh, the device is already in high capacity manufacturing, uh, millions at a time. I believe what will happen will transition as we will soon be testing those that are not symptomatic in order to get people back to school, back to work, get our economy going, which helps us, you know, sew up the big hole in our social fabric that's been created. So wide scale testing will lead to policies with respect to how we get people back to their daily routine. That is the biggest advantage to having that done. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time. I really appreciate right. it. You're welcome, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Right. The largest supercomputer in the world isn't just one computer, but thousands. Folding at Home is a distributed computing project that allows people to link up their computers to help fight diseases by understanding how they work at a molecular level. Right now, it's being used to help find a treatment for COVID-19, and you can be a part of it. Freethink is taking part as well by dedicating some of our underutilized computing resources. To learn more about it, I talked to Seth Golden, who is our resident tech expert. Good morning, Seth. How are you today? Doing as good as ever. Really quickly, I'm curious if you could tell me, what's the, the sort of quickest summary you have of Folding at Home? Sure. So Folding at Home is a project that's using people's computers from all over the world to simulate how proteins fold so that scientists can get a better understanding of how to treat diseases. And right now, how is that relevant to COVID-19? What it requires to understand how the proteins function is to actually run computer simulations. Using the power of everyone's computers to run thousands and thousands of simulations and figure out how those proteins actually function. So obviously we have a lot of people who watch these videos and are FreeThink audience members, but they might have spare computing power at home too. If they were to install Folding at Home and uh, wanted to join Team FreeThink, is that something they could do? Sure, so if you go to the Folding at Home website, you can download a little program that'll run on your computer and it will take all of the excess computing resources and work to simulate proteins folding. When they download the program, they could set up their program to join team 
241-543, and they'll be contributing to the Freethink team. So how is Freethink performing in terms of this? What progress have we made? Um, are we actually making a difference? Absolutely. So our computers are pretty powerful and our team is at about 7,500 out of about 250,000 teams. They, in the past month, have scaled up 60 times alone and now they're running 2.4 exaflops, which to give you some sense is more computing power than the top 500 supercomputers combined. That's a lot. <laughs> a ton. All right, man. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, thanks. Later. All right, bye. If you'd like to install Folding at Home on any of your computers, just check the description of this video for a link. And we'd love to have you on Team Freethink so that we can take credit for your computer's work. Okay, that's all for now. I've got to go build some Legos, and I will see you next week. I don't actually see you. I just see the camera, but I do pretend. That probably made it weirder.